For those of you who want no fuss, no frills, just decent, simple, honest motoring, there's not an awful lot of brands in Ireland that can deliver something like this under 20 grand. In fact, not even close to 20 because the Dacia Duster starts from just over 18. Now this version with all the packs and extras does come up to 24,000 euro, but by Irish standards for this size of car, that's still pretty decent. It's a 115 DCI engine. It's not fast, it's not stylish. No one's gonna look at it, not even once, never mind twice. But if you want a car that's new and has a warranty and will just deliver what a car should have always done, this is your man. Take the boot, for example. It's not heavy to open. It's got a parcel shelf that actually splits in two so you can easily fold it over. There's storage down here and it goes deep. It goes deeper than any hatchback you'll normally find and certainly one that doesn't cost anywhere near the price of this. So you get loads in. And let me show you the back. The door is open nice and wide. Head height, you've got loads of it. Rear leg room, it's not gigantic. I'll give you that. But the seats are nicely raised off the floor so you actually have places to put your feet. And the bench curves out to give the backs of I assume you're older, bigger passengers, because they'll be on the outside, more leg support. There is nothing to assist with charging or anything like, the, like that down here, but you can actually access the drinks holder area. That isn't probably intended for rear passengers, but you can. And yeah, you're gonna feel like you're kind of sitting on the back of the front passenger or the driver, but it's all right. You get pockets in the back of the seat. I only charge you 60 quid for them. Free in the Dacia. There's a little holder to open the fuel cap which makes it a bit easier. You get nav on this screen. Now, there are things as standard that you have to upgrade to, to get, for example, blind spot and reversing cameras, but you can get them. So what I like about Dacia or Dacia is they have let you pick trims based on what's important to you. You mightn't want a car with a, an actual radio. You might just be happy with a little display to flick between stations on the interim display. You can have that if you like. There's places to store things up here with little grip pads on them. It's six speed manual gearbox in this car, but you do get keyless, which will just stick in your pocket and close and lock the car every time you walk away. You get an armrest, can't really be adjusted apart from, apart from that way, but it's all right. You forgive it because it costs 18 grand. And then on this model, you get climate control with proper AC. And as I said, you get cameras and there's eco mode. Yeah, there's needles for displays. There's nothing much else that's fancy inside, but again, it is a honest car that will get you around if you're not that bothered about cars. For you, it's perfect. On my test route today, I deliberately brought this car up towards the Dublin mountains to see what it was like climbing up hills. Uh, did it struggle at times to, you know, get up serious inclines and stuff. And yeah, you've got to rev it a bit at times, but Overall, I found that it actually had more than enough power. On this model, you even get cruise control, so you can kick back. Now, it is down, buried in the car. Ugh. Down in the bells beside the handbrake, because there is a physical handbrake at this car. But these are the type of serious, these are steep inclines now. Give it a bit of a rev, and it has enough power to pull you up these hills. Average fuel economy is five liters per 100 kilometers, so it's gotta be cheap to run, cheap to tax. There's a five year warranty on the car. Dacia, in my mind, are the Ryanair of four wheels, except when you're going to Paris, they won't leave you in Beauvais, and it's not on any particular given Sunday at 12 o'clock at night, when you can get a cheap flight. It's a consistent product. So imagine going on to Ryanair and every time you went on the website, you were like, God, that's really cheap. It even handles well. And it really does keep going back to the price. And it's very difficult for me to pick flaws in it when it's that price. You could have a fleet of Dacia dusters on the road for 60 grand. And that would even buy you 
a decent Golf GTI anymore. As the day is long, this is an honest to goodness solid car. Whether you're a first time car buyer, yeah, it's not gonna win you any brownie points. Yeah, it's not probably gonna attract a girl who wants to go out with you because of your car. And anyway, people that vacuum this used to stay away from them. That's my advice here on not be on cars. And maybe you're someone who's downsizing. Maybe you're someone who's retired. It's a car that kind of fits everybody. And again, because of that price. This is a solid little offering. And anyone who tells you otherwise hasn't a clue what they're talking about. I promise. So for lots of people, yeah, there's hard plastics. For other people, hey, I've got roof rails, got my holidays, I do a bit of surfing. There's wind deflectors over the window so you can just crack a window open for a bit of fresh air. For other people, ah, oh, it's plastic and people are gonna slag me. What, about the fact that you've got a massive warranty in a brand new car? And you can do all the things that Audis can do a blind spot for like 30 grand more? What's there to slag? There was a time, a bit like Skoda back in the day, when certain cars and certain models deserved a bit of abuse. And now Dacia are in a place where Skoda were many years ago, where they're not for slagging anymore. That's a bloody good car. Thanks for watching.